everyone. I'm Teacher Chrissy Lamore. Right now, I am at the lobby of the pre-elementary campus. So to all the Sagredan families who are watching us right now, I'm sure that you and the kids terribly miss going to MDSF. Don't worry, once it's already safe, we're going to study together again face-to-face. -face. So let us continue keeping the faith and praying to God. Today, I'm going to be discussing our Fly Sagradan program. And joining me are my fellow school administrators. So please introduce yourselves. Hello everyone. I'm Teacher Shawi Disena. And I am the level coordinator for the kindergarten. And I've been working here at, at MDSF for almost 23 years. Hello everyone, I'm Teacher Kai Santos Ong. I am the assistant principal in the pre-elementary and elementary departments of the MDSF and I've been here for 20 years already. Hi dear families, I'm uh, Mrs. Vanessa Cruz or Teacher Ines. I am the level coordinator of the Advanced CASA and I have been a member of the MDSF family for 17 years. Hi Sagradan families! I'm Mrs. Flor Delisa Alcantara, a.k.a. Teacher Flor, and I am happily working at MDSF for almost 18 years, and I am the level coordinator of Junior CASA. Hello, Sagradan families. I'm Mrs. Esperanza Emanuel, but the preschoolers call me Teacher Pichi. For 23 years, MDSF is my second home away from our home. So, we are done with the school year, and we are here to talk about our learning continuity program, which is the Fly Sagradan in the pre-elementary department. We're going to be talking about what we did, what worked, how we migrated our services in the online platform, and how our families responded to this new modality of learning. So, Teacher Kai, when the pandemic hit the country, how is it like? How did it affect our educational uh, arena? And how did we respond to it? Okay, Teacher Chris, so as we all know, nobody expected the coming of this pandemic. And if I'm going to describe the preparation for the school year 2020 to 2021, everything was fast-tracked. But you know, the sense of family in our institution inspired us to piggyback on each other. There were a lot of collaborations. It was very fast. The trainings were very rigid because we were uh, following a timetable which should be implemented for a very short period of time. There were a lot of differences in opinions, in perspectives, but what glued us together is the school's mission and vision. And for sure, we know that we are aiming for a goal. So I think that's what really made it a very successful one. So Teacher Kai is really all about rapid prototyping and making sure that everyone was on board as we migrated everything online. What about the part of the administrators, the teachers, the students, and even the parents? I'm sure there were a lot of of challenges. Teacher Shawi, would you like to share that to us? Teacher Chris, when we talk about the challenges, looking back, so all of us were really new about this mode of teaching virtually. And actually, if we talk about challenges, there are lots of challenges that we faced last year. So first one, on our part, our community is already prepared, our competencies. And then because of the pandemic, the DepEd released the new MELTS, which is the new competency. So we have to do it all over again. And then after that, the skills of the teachers. It's a big challenge because technically we have to work with computers so teachers should be technically knowledgeable about those things. And of course, the online resources, the online games, the canned videos, how to do teaching virtually. The challenges were not only for the teachers, but also for the parents and the students. So for the parents, they are thinking of how to do it at home. For the pupils, our task is to how to maintain or to sustain their attention during virtual classes. Thank you, Teacher Sha. So even if there were many challenges and even if there was the threat of the pandemic, the COVID to every stakeholder of the community, we still pushed through. We still decided to continue teaching and learning and serving our Sagradan families. 
That's the reason why the Fly Sagradan was born. So Teacher Peachy is here to walk us through with the Fly Sagradan, our learning continuity program. Teacher Peach. Teacher Chris, uh, the FLY or the Flexible E-Learning for Young Sagrada Program. This is the learning continuity program of Montessori de Sagrada Familia for preschoolers up to grade 3 children. But basically, in the pre-elementary department, the FLY program adheres to the strong communication, the connection, and the collaboration of the home and the school with the teachers as the facilitators of learning and doing the virtual meetings and the parents or the caregivers and the guardians as the ones who assist the kids in doing the parent-child activities. And of course, our pre-elementary children as the heart, the center, and the core of the FLY program because all the learning approaches, the 21st century activities, all these were designed to cater the needs, the interest, and all the things that are within the hearts and the minds of our pre-elementary pupils. Thank you, Teacher Peachy. So, I'm very sure that there are still a lot of families who are still undecided and eager to know more about our Fly Sagradan program or how will they do the online learning? How will it be possible? To give us a detailed picture of how it works, Teacher Floor, our junior CASA teacher, one of the features of our FLY program is the LMS or the Learning Management System. In our LMS, there are two parts. We have the virtual meeting that happens every day together with the teachers, the teachers who facilitate the online learning. And also, we have the PCA or the Parent-Child Activity. This activity is facilitated by the parents. So during virtual meetings, we do a lot of routines and exciting and interesting activities for the children to make them engage and to catch their attention. So during our virtual meeting, we do singing of song, we do exercises, we also discuss concepts. But this is not only for the sake of knowing the lesson for the day. We also do some activities like arts and crafts and also games. Wow, that really sounds so exciting and engaging, Teacher Floor. So you mentioned about the PCA. So that's our version of the asynchronous classes. And here's Teacher Ness to talk about it. Teacher Ness. So PCA stands for Parent-Child Activity. So in this pandemic, in this new learning modality, we deemed it necessary for the parents to have their maximum participation for their kids because 24-7, they are with the kids at home. We include the PCAs for in the morning, the preschoolers, they have their virtual meeting with their teachers for one hour. And then in the afternoon, they do their PCAs with their parents. So this PCAs, this may include activities such as online games, arts and crafts activities. So the PCA activities, they are supplementary activities which are connected to the concepts which are presented by the teachers during virtual meetings. So these activities help the children learn more together with their parents. Okay, so that sounds fun. Play-based and experiential activities that the child will do at home together with his parents or any adult or caregiver at home. But let's go back to the virtual meeting. Teacher Floor, you are only given one hour to keep them engaged. And we all know the attention span of the pre-elementary kids, right? It's very short and they easily get bored. The 21st century learners now, that's who they are. So the challenge is to keep them engaged. So how do you engage your kids, your learners? Okay, one of our challenges during VM is the attention span of our kids, how to make them engage. Siyempre po, we need the teachers who are very energetic, very lively, and we make sure that teachers are very pleasant when they face the kids. And also, the activities that we prepared for the kids are very interesting and they will make the kids be engaged and focused. So, during our virtual meeting, we give them time to have some games, we let them work on their artworks. We let them participate during our online game using the Genially. And also, we give them time to share whatever output they have. 
And that's one of our requests from the parent. We include in our planner the activities that the parents will do together with the kids. And then we ask them to present the output the following day. And during our virtual meeting, we give time for the kids to share something about the output they did together with their parents. Wow, Teacher Floor. So during this pandemic, only the hardworking, the committed, the passionate, and the driven teachers will really survive. So moving forward, it is very obvious that the facilitation of face-to-face -face classes is way different than online learning or distance learning. So Teacher Sharon, would you like to share with us how did the pandemic affect the way children learn now? Actually, Teacher Chris, we all know that kids nowadays are really into gadgets, right? And they really want to do those uh, games online. On the positive side, they easily adapt the virtual meetings because they are in front of the computer and then they see lots of uh, things moving, colorful things, the games, and that like what teacher uh, Flor said earlier, it is our task also to give them those kinds of materials. In that sense, we really notice that children are really digitally inclined and because of that, they are enjoying our activities online and even their activities at home. Thank you so much, Teacher Sharon. So, Teacher Kai, since this is the first time that we had to do this, from our typical face-to-face -face classes to something that we never did or we never imagined that we would be able to do in our 24 years of history, what are the exciting things that emerged out of this new learning modality? Okay, Teacher Chris, um, actually because of this new learning modality, there came a lot of discoveries and revelations in the end of the stakeholders. So first, for the students, as Teacher Sharon mentioned a while ago, they are the digital natives, as we all know. So it is like they are the turtles being thrown into a pond. The pond is the online platform, so they are really so used to facing the screen, seeing their teachers and their classmates online. So they're really having fun. Actually, in the end of the parents, the use of technology should just be regulated. That's why the partnership of the home or the parents and the school or their teachers was really strengthened. Because most of the times, the teachers would usually consider the setup in the home as one of the biggest factors whenever they plan their parent-child activities. I assume it was really the teachers and the parents who had major adjustment in this kind of learning or kind of education. Kasi as explained a while ago by my colleagues here, the training was so rigid. Would you believe, Teacher Kiss, there were teachers who would just have this basic knowledge when it comes to technology integration in education? I'm really very interested about these new things that emerged. The families who would only just drop their kids off at school before they are now more involved in the academic life or in the online learning life of their children now. So, of course, engagement is also a challenge, right? So, how did you keep your families engaged? So, it's not only the students, but the parents as well, right? So, who would like to answer? Teacher Peach? Let me, Teacher Chris. So, our Sagradan families emerged successfully because of the collaboration and their hard work and dedication in supporting our learners while doing the PCAs, while being engaged in the virtual meetings. So, we are just so blessed and we are so grateful for this school year. Our parents are very supportive co-educational partners from learning the LMS, how to navigate it, how to enter the Google Meet world. They were really so resilient in studying all this and really being involved in this new learning modality where their kids can still perform at their best even if they're at home. That's I think is more beneficial for them because the kids are in the comfort of their homes and they are able to still do bonding while learning together. Wow, that's very powerful. Iba talaga ang sagradan sense of family, right? Teacher Peach, so thank you for that. Teacher Chris, can you add something? 
Sure, teacher Sha. What is it? Okay, teacher Chris. And I am also uh, proud to say that the parents are really connected with us with our consultation meeting every afternoon. I know that the parents really feel that we listen to them. We know what they want. We also accept their suggestions. And they can do all of that during the consultation meeting. Wow, thank you, Teacher Peach, Teacher Sharon. So that's very powerful. That is what you call our Sagradan sense of family, which is one of our core values here at MDSF. So speaking of families, recently there have been a number of families who joined their children in our Fly Sagradan trial class. So Teacher Floor, would you like to share with us what happened? Actually, Teacher Grace, our trial class, it's a blast. And we also consider this as a perfect venue for the parents and for the kids who will be with us this coming July, right, teachers? And we are hoping that all of the parents who joined the trial class uh, will be joining also our FLY program this coming school year 2021-2022. So, what happened during our trial class? We had our sessions with our students for four days. So, during our trial class, we enjoyed singing, dancing, just like the students enrolled in the fitness teacher nest. We had our junior fitness club. We had our um, Zufari club and also the STEM. Yeah, and I know the moderators of these clubs would agree with me that trial classes were very successful and it was meaningful also because uh, we really saw the smiles and the faces of our kids and the parents who really enjoyed being with the kids during the virtual meeting. Honestly, during our trial, parang hindi po siya first time. Personally, I felt that when we had our trial, parang regular school days na rin po talaga siya. And the connection, the relationship that we built with our Sagradan families, super, super talaga. Sagradan family talaga, teacher. Wow, I'm happy for you, Teacher Floor, and the rest of the pre-elementary teachers. I know that even if we don't get to see our students face-to-face, whenever we would hear their voice and hear their laughters online, it's really our kilig moment, right? So for the last question, Teacher Ness, there are still a lot of families who still don't know what to do. As a matter of fact, there are families who did an academic pause last year and are still clueless as to what they are going to do for this school year. What is your advice? Should they wait for the schools to open or are they going to do online learning, modular learning? What's your advice? For the parents or for the families who decided to do an academic pause with their kids, don't worry, it's okay, we feel you, we understand how you came up to your decision as a parent myself also because we have doubts, we have fears, we had a lot of questions whether this new uh, mode of learning will work with our kids. But when we think about it, who knows when this pandemic is gonna end. So we encourage you, it is now the time that you send your kids back to school, even if it's not the physical school. Give your kids the chance to learn again, to be with their friends again here in MDSF. Thank you so much, Teacher Ness. And I completely agree with everyone, especially with what Teacher Ness said. You know, our children are the most affected by the pandemic. Until now, they are locked down in our home. And during the start, it was really fun, you know, giving them more freedom and less structure. But what they need are predictable activities that are fun, interest-based, developmentally appropriate, and that are also geared towards some academic concepts. And I completely agree with Teacher Ness because we do not know the future. It's very uncertain. So to all those families that are interested to have their child experience the Fly Sagradan program at MDSF, the registration link is found in the caption of this video. We hope to be of service to your family 
this school year. It's going to be very exciting. The teachers that are with me today, they will be the one to teach your kids. And we are looking forward to seeing you all. May you all keep safe. May the Lord continue to bless your family and keep you safe during this very challenging time. Thank you for watching us. God bless and soar high, Sagradans. Bye.